Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Right now there is one build in Minecraft Dungeons that is circulating the community and it is undoubtedly the best build in the game. The Fighter's Bindings build. The Fighter's Bindings are already very strong by themselves but if you combine that with some very good artifacts and some good gear, you are going to have a very good build on your hands. This build can clear every single dungeon in Minecraft Dungeons on the highest level, Apocalypse 6 with absolutely no difficulty. This is a full guide for this build, so I'm going to tell you all which items you need for it, where you can get all of those items, the enchantments that you want, and show you every single step of the way in finding yourself the full build. Before I get into all of the details, let's get into an overview of the build. So how does this build work? Why is it so good? This build combines a very fast attack speed with the proper enchantments to make sure that you can sustain yourself by attacking enemies very consistently. In the melee weapon spot, we have the fighter's bindings. In the armor spot, we actually have multiple good choices to choose from but the best choice is going to be the ember robe. We're not putting too much emphasis on the bow here because this is a build that is based around the melee weapon and you rarely ever use the ranged weapon with this build. Looking at our artifacts, we have the boots of swiftness and the ghost cloak and then the death cap mushroom. And one more that's not on here, but we are gonna swap in every boss fight is the gong of weakening. Now going into detail with each item I just listed, going in the same order as the overview, so that brings us to the melee weapon slot, the fighter's bindings. These have a very, very fast base attack speed. And one thing that's also really, really great about them is when you do your combo hit with them, you won't stop attacking for a split second after. When you look at weapons like these sickles, they have a combo that will cause you to attack slower for a short period of time. As opposed to with these fighters bindings, you do not have that downtime. You are constantly attacking. So with this consistent attack rate, we need the right enchantments to make the build and also even the weapons themselves work well. The most important enchantment, the best one, and you need this for the build to work is Radiance. This gives you a 20% chance to heal yourself on hit. And this is what makes it so that while we attack enemies, we are at the same time surviving very easily. Again, because of that fast attack speed, this is healing us very frequently and for pretty good chunks of our health. And without this, you will be dying a lot. But when you have this on and you're using the rest of this build, you are pretty much invincible. The second best in slot enchantment that increases our AoE damage by a huge amount and also just our damage in general is Swirling. When this activates, it deals a large amount of damage to all of the enemies around us in a circle. The Fighter's Bindings combo every third hit, and again, we're attacking so much that we're going to be activating this combo very, very often. And Swirling deals over three times the damage of the Fighter's Bindings, at least at my power level. I know that the damage that Swirling does does vary based on the power power level of your weapon. The third enchantment slot is not nearly as important as the first two, but it can still increase your damage by a lot. And we actually have three choices for this one, each being the best in their own way. The first and best for overall use is critical hit. This will be good against both bosses and also mobs because it gives you a chance to triple your base damage on hit. And that chance is a one in five chance, which may sound like little, but again, since we're hitting so fast, that is activating a lot. This is the best for the third slot because it's really effective on every type of mob and every type of boss but there are also two more options the second one being committed which is basically a boss killer it will make you deal more damage to wounded enemies as they get more and more wounded so this can definitely help you clear a boss faster than you would with critical hit on low health mobs it's definitely not effective on medium health mobs it's barely effective and then on high health mobs it does have some effectiveness but at that point you might as well just have critical hits so that you can have consistent damage with all types of mobs. And then the third option is gravity, which is effective only on mobs and literally makes no difference against bosses at all. This will make it so that mobs get pulled in front of you when you attack, and this will just help you deal easier AOE to more enemies at a time. But the problem again is that this does not affect bosses. And also it may take you longer to clear dungeons because you are not dealing as much damage. 
I'd recommend that you keep on farming the Fighter's Bindings until you have Radiant Swirling and Critical Hit on them. These are the best enchantments. I will be showing you how to farm these effectively in a bit, but for now let's get into the other items. Looking at our armor slot, we have the Ember Robe, which gives us a 25% artifact cooldown, a 15% overall movement speed buff, and also a burning effect where we will deal small amounts of damage to nearby enemies. The basic version of this armor, the Evocation Robe, actually isn't much worse at all. It's barely a difference because it only doesn't have the burning effect and that burning effect barely deals damage. So I don't think it's a must to get the Ember Robe. I think the Evocation Robe works just fine enough and really it's overkill to get the Ember Robe. It's too minor of a difference. Another option that works well with this build is the Battle Robe or its unique variant, the Splendid Robe. This will give you a 30% increase to your melee damage instead of the movement speed aura that the Evocation Robe gives you and it still has the 25% artifact cooldown reduction. When you are clearing dungeons effectively, you are not stopping for every single mob that you see and really only for the bigger packs or sometimes you're not even going to look for mobs at all and you're going to be speedrunning through dungeons and you also don't struggle with damage with this build. If you have everything at a high power level you do not even need extra damage it's not very noticeable when you swap from the evocation robe to the battle robe and overall the amount of time that the speed boost saves you adds up in the long run now to talk about the enchantments that we want to put on our ember robe if we can get that or evocation robe the enchantments for our armor are extremely important. You need to have two cooldown enchantments on your armor. This way you are going to have a total of 79% cooldown reduction from this armor because of the perk and then also the two enchantments added on. Each enchantment will decrease the cooldowns of your artifacts by 27%. This will let us keep up the death cap mushroom permanently, which is extremely important because if that artifact goes down for even a split second, we can die because we're not gonna be proccing our radiance enchantment and that is the only thing that is really keeping us alive. Also, this will let you use your Boots of Swiftness permanently, your Ghost Cloak pretty much permanently, and your Gong of Weakening on bosses permanently as well. This just keeps the build going, it keeps it working 24 seven. There is never any downtime because of this. Uh, without the enchantments, you would probably be able to attack for about 15 seconds with the Death Cap Mushroom being up, and then you'd have to take a little break to make sure that you don't die from the Death Cap Mushroom running out and the Radiance enchantment not our third armor enchantment does not matter nearly as much, but if you're really going for that best in slot piece, you want cowardice. This is going to increase your melee and range damage by 40% when you are at full health. And we're pretty much at full health all the time with this build, so you're not going to have to worry about that. This is a significant damage boost, obviously. Now, it is great, and if you can get it, dude, this is the best in slot. But if you don't get very lucky or maybe you don't want to grind very hard for this piece of gear, you could also go ahead and get the surprise gift enchantment. This will give you a chance to spawn a strength or a speed potion when you use a health potion and those just help clear dungeons a little bit faster and if you're just looking for overall good enchantments i did make a video ranking all of the armor enchantments so you could just check that video out and that way you can know which enchantments you can use but you do have to have the double cooldown enchantments that is non-negotiable it's only the third one that is not as strict and then getting into our weapon slot, it doesn't matter too much as I've mentioned before, but if you do want to go the extra mile and get a really good bow, then you can go for something like the Harp Gross Bow, which has really good AoE if you get the right enchantments on it. Um, or you could go for something like the Guardian Bow that has the potential to one-shot the Mushroom Monstrosity. So it's kind of your pick and choose here. If you want a Power Bow that has good single target damage, you can go for that. And if you want something that can help you AoE mobs down, then you can go for something like the Harp Crossbow. Really, the only time you're going to be using your ranged weapon is when you get webbed by a spider. Or maybe when you're fighting a boss and you can't get close to them, but... When you use the fighter's bindings on a boss, you 
kill them pretty much before they even charge up and spawn because they have that little timer where they are still rising and you can kill them with the fighters bindings before they even do that moving back over to our artifact slots first i want to quickly explain why the death cap mushroom artifact is so good it is the best artifact in the game because it increases your attack speed by a lot and when you already have a weapon with a fast base attack speed that increases by a lot a lot a lot when you put this mushroom on because it's a percentage based increase we also have the boots of swiftness which just give us a overall movement speed increase we can keep this up all the time thanks to our cooldown reductions and then we have the ghost cloak which also gives you a speed boost but it also lets you walk through enemies without collision so if you are meant with a huge pack of mobs that you don't want to fight you are just able to walk right through them when you use this artifact and then finally we have the gong of weakening we are going to swap out the ghost cloak and put this in that slot whenever we engage in a boss fight this can literally triple the speed at which you kill a boss uh, it weakens them and that makes you do way more damage so this is very important for killing bosses I know it may seem annoying to have to swap out artifacts, but trust me, it's worth it. It will save you a lot of time. You can speed run with the Boots of Swiftness and Ghost Cloak. And then when it's time to fight a boss, you just quickly put that Gong of Weakening on and you can kill the boss very quickly. That's about it for detailing each item. To take a quick look at the playstyle that we want to have while using this build, there are a few pointers that I would like to give. The first thing that I want to say is you are going to want to be holding down your attack button and not spam clicking it because you're going to lose a lot of attack speed doing so. I know for a lot of you it's obvious and it's an obvious fact, but I just want to make sure that nobody is out there spam clicking with the fighter's bindings. Also, it is very important to make sure that you always have your artifacts activated. If there is a split second where your death cap mushroom is not activated, you can die really quickly. You're not going to be activating that radiance enchantment also you're just gonna lose overall speed if you do not use the boots of swiftness and ghost cloak consistently and that will just cause you to take more time to finish dungeons and then also you want the gong of weakening to always be up when you are fighting a boss but also one thing you want to make sure you activate it at the right times in the past when I wouldn't pay attention to my gong of weakening and I would just spam press it then sometimes the boss would knock me away right as I used it and the boss wouldn't get affected and I would have to wait until the gong of weakening was up again to actually start dealing good damage to the boss so just make sure that you watch out for that then some tips that are a bit more advanced first of all i would recommend kind of having a circular motion with your cursor or pointer whatever you're using whenever you are attacking mobs because this way you will always have a target there will never be a time when you're not hitting a mob by accident and not hitting mobs can again get you killed because you are not going to be proccing your radiance enchantment so you have to make sure that you're uh killing mobs so i noticed that this circular motion really helped me out it doesn't have to be anything crazy you don't have to be going across the screen it can be very small circles just have little circles to attack the enemies and make sure that you're never not attacking something also one more thing and probably the most effective tip that i can give you is when you're fighting mobs go in the middle of the pack do not stand in front of the packs try to ghost cloak or whatever it may be and try to go right in the middle of a mob pack because this way your swirling enchantment will be the most effective since it does damage all around you when you are in the middle of a lot of mobs you can deal damage to all of them at once as opposed to when you only attack this pack from the front you are not going to be dealing damage to as many of them as you could have been so really look out for that that is a huge damage boost and other than that of course just have fun enjoy the build learn as you go and you know watch as your enemies just disintegrate all right so now getting into how to get every single item that you need for this build in the most effective and optimal way possible it is a journey to get all of the items but it is pretty fun and it's really rewarding at the end when you have everything for the build and you just have the best build in the game it's a amazing feeling with all of these items you are gonna have to run dungeons at adventure mode or higher unless i say otherwise so just make sure that you've completed default mode before you begin collecting the items for this build 
The first thing we want to do is get the Boots of Swiftness and Ghost Cloak at Creepy Crypt. So we need to unlock Creepy Crypt. You want to head over to Creepy Woods. It doesn't really matter what difficulty you do this on. But anyways, you're just going to take the path that I do here where you free the villager. And then right after that quest where you free the villager, there is a place where you can go off to the left. And this is going to be the same for all of you. So you're just going to follow the path that I take right here. Okay, just go and then go up right where I went up, okay? And it's always gonna be the same, so don't worry about um, a different map generation. And then you walk up, click the button, this door will open, and uh, you're gonna walk in the door. And it, there's gonna be a scroll there for me. I already have the location, so there's no scroll. You can just leave to camp after this. You don't have to stay in the games. You will not lose your progress. So now that we have Creepy Crypt, we want to get our Ghost Cloak and Boots of Swiftness. These items are essential to the build and they will also just help us get other items because they increase our movement speed by a pretty decent amount. So all you're gonna do is just follow the mission guide. Obviously, you're not gonna have the Ghost Cloak and Boots of Swiftness and cooldown and like I already do so this will be slower for you but it still shouldn't be too hard try to avoid killing enemies if you really have to you will when you run up to the place where you open this gate you will have to fight some mobs and a gold chest will spawn after you kill these you can get it gold chests do not spawn artifacts so those aren't really important for us here but anyways you're just gonna keep following the mission guide until you complete the dungeon and all we want is that final reward chest that gives us a guaranteed artifact and it's a pretty high chance that we get the boots of swiftness or ghost cloak from that because there are only four artifacts that drop from creepy crypt and two of them are the ones that we need i got my boots of swiftness on the first run of doing this and then on my third one i was able to get the ghost cloak so this really should not take you long at all if you get unlucky you may have to do this for slightly longer but um, overall this should be a pretty quick way to get yourself some boots of swiftness and a ghost cloak Okay, so now that we've gotten our Ghost Cloak and our Boots of Swiftness, we want to head over to High Block Halls because we want the Light Feather and the Death Cap Mushroom artifacts. These artifacts do drop on default mode, so if you are really struggling, you can drop down to that difficulty. We're gonna need the Light Feather because it's gonna allow us to take a lot of shortcuts when farming for the Fighter's Bindings. Now, if you are on PC and you have an Xbox controller, then you do not need the Light Feather because you have an extreme shortcut that you can take right now. There is a method where you will be able to skip a lot of the process in getting the Fighter's Bindings. But for the rest of us that are just on console or are on PC and don't have an Xbox controller, then you are gonna have to get the Light Feather. Also, we want the Death Cap Mushroom just because this is the best artifact in the game and it is actually gonna help us farm for the items that we need for this build as well. So you don't need to hit any enemies here, just as with the Creepy Crypt run. And you're definitely going to want to equip your Boots of Swiftness and Ghost Cloak because that's going to make you go a lot faster. But basically, you're just going to follow the mission as normal. And then most of the time, you are going to end up getting an Obsidian Chest spawn. And you want to open that because Obsidian Chests do have a chance to drop artifacts for you. I actually ended up getting the Light Feather on my first run when I opened up the Obsidian Chest. And of course you still want to complete the dungeon after you have gotten that chest because you will get a guaranteed artifact for completing it. I actually ended up getting both of my artifacts from the obsidian chest but that's just luck based so again I would recommend running through the whole thing. But yeah I got the death cap mushroom on my fourth run of doing this. It did not take me much time at all. Okay, now you're going to want to make sure that you have your Boots of Swiftness, your Ghost Cloak, and your Death Cap Mushroom equipped because we are heading over to Soggy Swamp for two reasons. The first one being to farm up the Evocation Rope with the double cooldown enchantments on it. And the second reason being that we want to get the Soggy Cave secret level unlocked. Now to start off for farming the Evocation Robe slash Ember Robe, for this dungeon run you want to make sure that you're going at your recommended power level or higher and before you enter it you want to equip all of your highest power level gear and then enter the dungeon and then you can put on whatever gear you want and I mean this includes artifacts as well, weapons, armor, everything. Uh, this is because when you have a high power level and then enter a dungeon you will get higher power level items from mobs that you 
kill um, even if you switch back to your old armor it works weird but you just want to make sure that you're doing this you want to kill any big packs of mobs that you find because those mobs actually have a very high chance to drop you gear uh, when I was fighting them I actually got two evocation robes to drop just from one pack and I mean this is consistent too this is not something that happens very rarely I ran this multiple times and I got many uh, evocation robes anyways now getting into how to unlock soggy cave and I know that this has been getting talked about for a long time in the community now because this is a great spot to go um, but there has been some confusion as to how you know when the Saki Cave has spawned in your dungeon. And I'm here to tell you how and to explain as well. So basically, whenever you enter a dungeon, if you open up your map, you have a secrets found counter in your bottom left. And I believe for the Xbox uh, controller, you have to hold down your D-pad to get this. Um, and for PC players, you just press the M button or you can click on the icon. Anyways, once you look at that secret amount, if you are running this on Apocalypse, you will have either one secret available or two secrets available. When there is only one secret available in the dungeon, that means that Soggy Cave did not spawn 100%. Why? Because that is just the secret cow level rune secret. That's all it is. It is always going to be there 100% of the time. It's always going to spawn. So that's why when you're on apocalypse mode, every time, if you notice, you enter a dungeon, there will be a, at least one secret. If there are two secrets, that means that you have also gotten soggy cave there are only two possible secrets now with default mode if you haven't completed default yet then you will sometimes either have zero out of one secrets or you will have zero out of zero secrets because unless you complete default mode you cannot get the secret cow level and because of that it's not going to show up as an available secret so the only secret you can get is soggy cave so that's why it will only be up to one secret and when it is one secret it's guaranteed soggy cave when it's zero secrets it's guaranteed no soggy cave spawn soggy cave spawns outside of the second exit in soggy swamp if you see that you have gotten the soggy cave to spawn then you're just going to want to run around this area uh, not fully just follow the mission you want to make sure you're exploring everything and you will be able to find soggy cave after a bit of exploring in this area once you find the dungeon it's pretty simple you just walk in you take a right and then you will see a lever press it and don't even worry about the mobs that get left behind here uh, but there where I'm pointing there is gonna be a scroll and you can pick that up and if you've already gotten your evocation robe at this point um, then you can just leave you don't have to play out the mission but um, if you want you could because at this point you'll be pretty close to the boss and he could give you a good item <sighs> okay now that we have gotten soggy cave unlocked we need to get our fighters bindings before you enter soggy cave make sure you put on all of your highest power level gear and then again you can put on your speed running gear once you are in the dungeon but this is where we are going to utilize our light feather okay so you're going to put this on the ghost cloak on and the boots of swiftness and again if you have an xbox controller on pc then you will not need the light feather so just showing you how to do the trick if you are on pc with an xbox controller Basically what you do is you go to this door, walk up to it like I did, as close as you can, and then you just hold down your mouse button, right, with your mouse, you hold down the uh, left click button, the select button, and then you take your Xbox controller and press the left D-pad. And this will literally just teleport you in. Um, I don't know how this works, but it does. So you are lucky if you are able to do this. This is a huge time saver. But if you can't, we are going to need to do this dungeon the more legit way. So in Soggy Cave, there are four possible types of dungeons that can be generated. The first one that I'm showing you here, unfortunately, you cannot skip with the Light Feather. This is the only one. The other three out of four, you can do a nice little shortcut with the Light Feather and you won't have to fight all these mobs. But if you do get this, it's okay. Go ahead, fight all the mobs and the gate will unlock. Okay, 
So now we see the buttons, okay? Uh, these are kind of randomly generated, so they are slightly difficult to do, but this is what I recommend, and this is what strategy works for me all the time, uh, and I've run Soggy Cave a lot. Uh, you kind of just spam the buttons, okay? You kind of just spam the buttons a little bit until you have one piston down, and all of the other pistons are up. And what you do after that is when you have one piston down is you will continuously press the rightmost button <clears throat> the fourth button all the way until the middle piston is the one that is down so as you can see that's what I'm doing here I just press this until the middle piston is down and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna press the second button and the third button in that exact order and this is gonna unlock your door the second and third buttons are the ones that are closer to the middle so as you can see I just press the second and then the third and the gate unlocks Going to the second possible dungeon generation, which we now can skip, you're gonna wanna go on this pillar that I do right here, and you're gonna wanna position yourself to face the kind of blocks in front of you. And then once you do that, you're gonna wanna put your pointer on the blocks that are in front of you, and use your light feather and you are just gonna be able to go on top of it you can't do this with a normal jump and then you're gonna look at the pillar that's to the right of the gate position yourself towards it by kind of clicking in that position on the block that you're already standing on and then you light feather over and then you light feather again into the button area once again you just kind of button mash until you have one piston down and then you use that rightmost button as I'm showing to get the piston in the middle to be the one that is down and then you press the second and then the third button in that order the two that are closest to the middle second and then third and this will open up your gate looking at the third type of dungeon we can get you're gonna want to walk up these steps as i did that are to the right of the gate then you are gonna kind of look at the pillar that is across from you and you are just going to roll over and there are kind of two ways to land this I'll show you the first one in a moment but as I landed you just want to light feather like I did then walk up to that block and just jump on to the land that you see now as you can see usually you go on the block where my pointer is by landing on that block and then feathering onto the next block and then from there, you jump onto the uh, ground just as I did before. For this button combination, all you gotta do is press left, right, left, right, left. So just press left and then alternate. So you just keep alternating after you press the left button. So making our way into the final dungeon type, all you're gonna do is just walk to the middle of the staircase here. And then once you are standing on that, you don't want to use any speed or anything. You just want to look to the left of the gate where there is a kind of uh, pillar area and you're going to want to point to it and jump on it. And then once you do, you walk around the gate. And then I got the same button combination as last one. So it's just left, right, left, right, left. And then you just walk into the obsidian chest room and there we go. We got ourselves some items. I have some stream footage of me in the background of me getting the fighter's bindings on stream. Uh, so yeah, I was pretty happy, I was pretty happy. Um, I actually got two pairs of the fighter's bindings within an hour of grinding here, uh, which is actually pretty lucky. The first pair was not too good, but the second one was one with Radiance, critical hit and swirling on it. Okay, so you got the best armor, you got the best weapon, you got the best artifacts, Almost. We need one more thing, everybody, and this is going to be essential in killing bosses. It's going to triple the rate at which we kill them. We need the Gong of Weakening, which is only available on Apocalypse mode, okay? You have to make sure you're in Apocalypse. And we are going to go to Desert Temple, and you are going to do this quick path like I do here, okay? So you do not fight any enemies again, as always, and you are literally just going to run through everything make your way to where the key is unlock the door and then on the first left that you can make after that you're gonna go into that dungeon and hopefully you get a good camera angle for this but you're gonna jump off the ledge right like i did here and this wall is gonna open up and there's gonna be an obsidian chest in there you're just gonna click on it and there we go I got a gong of weakening so this did not take me much time at all this was my third run and uh, it was really really easy to get if you do get a bad camera angle then unfortunately you are not going to be able to get this obsidian chest but 
um, that's fine. You can just refresh and you will eventually get it. You can also get two gold chests from here. Here I have a run of me where I got a bad camera angle. And uh, if you actually go up the stairs outside of the obsidian chest room, you can grab that gold chest and you can do this on both camera angles. And to get the other golden chest, you just have to get all of the levers. There are three and then the bridge will open up and you will be able to get the second golden chest. Anyways, everybody, if you did follow everything that is in this video, then by now you have yourself the best build in Minecraft dungeons that you will easily be able to beat all of the levels on the max difficulty of Apocalypse on. And also you will be ready to take on the upcoming DLC. If you did enjoy, Maybe leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It really helps out. But other than that, I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.